81 feet likewise. Yeah. Twenty-four-year-old Alice Ruggles works for media giant Sky. She is a site coordinator and PA to the head of sales in Gateshead, Newcastle. Described by friends, family and colleagues as an outgoing bubbly character who loves meeting new people, would make anyone she came into contact with smile, beautiful with a wicked sense of humour and the most kind-hearted person you could ever wish to meet. Originally from Leicestershire, had a passion for fencing and most proud of winning the Women's Epi at Leeds Open in 2012. In early 2016, she is befriended on social media by a man named Tryman Dillon, otherwise known as Harry. He's 25, originally from India, Dylan moves to Scotland to study at university, after which he remains there, joining the British Army. He comments on one of Alice's photos, saying she was the most naturally beautiful girl he had ever seen. This begins a chat, which in turn starts a romance. Dylan is actually in a non-combat role in Afghanistan when the two first start to speak. They get to meet face to face on the 20th of January when they will spend two weeks together, the first week in Newcastle and the second in Edinburgh, where Dylan is actually based. At first he's very attentive and kind, but very quickly becomes critical of Alice's family, friends, what she wears, her life choices, having such an effect on Alice that she becomes withdrawn losing weight, isolated, completely different to the vivacious person she once was. In July of 2016, Alice is contacted by a female who says Dylan has been asking her out on a dating app. She soon finds out this girl is not the first. With this, Alice ends the relationship. Hoping to make a relatively clean break from Dylan, Alice tries to be kind and sympathetic, but he will not leave her alone. So she chooses to ignore him in the hope he goes away, but it just makes things worse. He begins relentlessly leaving voicemails on Alice's phone. I'm back. Please, I just want to speak to you. There's nothing else. I really know if you're getting to the wife this but please can you call me back? Thank you. Begging, pleading, crying, then becoming aggressive and threatening. Contacting her friends and family, calling her mum Sue, begging her to intervene in some vain hope that they will change Alice's mind, when in reality he's making them worry for Alice's safety. Then he begins to stalk Alice. Dylan has hacked into her phone and her Facebook page and found that she may be starting a relationship with someone else. His behaviour is out of control. Her friends try to encourage her to call police, but Alice, knowing this will get Dylan in serious trouble with the army, doesn't want to go that far. On the 30th of September, he will knock Alice's door on three separate occasions. Every time Alice comes to the spy hole, he removes himself, leaving her shaken and petrified. But later, when Alice is in bed, he climbs over the fence to get to her back window and chaps on the glass. When Alice opens the curtains, there's Dylan moving away but gesturing to the ledge where he has weirdly placed flowers and chocolates. She finally calls police. Hi there, um, I just need a bit of advice really, um, more than anything. Um, so I split up with my boyfriend about three months ago. I know that he's hacked into my Facebook and also my phone. And then tonight he's, he's come round the back, he's like left 
um, some flowers and chocolates on the like outside window so and like he walked off, he's not done anything, but I'm just like my friends have been telling me to call the police, I've been putting that off but I just feel a bit like shaken up tonight. Would we'll also solicitor and take up an injunction or make an issue on the pin notice which means she never comes near you again or contacts you and you'll be arrested. Can I um try that option please? Yeah, of course you can. Later that same night, on his drive back to Edinburgh Barracks, he leaves a chilling voicemail telling Alice he won't kill her, he doesn't want to kill her. His last ditch attempt of control. I just wanted to give you a flower and joke with you proof that, no, I don't want to kill you. I'm not, I'm not intending to kill you. That's all I wanted to say. Killing you is something that I've never, ever, ever thought about. And I will never, ever even think about that. Over the coming days, Alice will call the police again, this time telling friends and family she felt palmed off, that the police will come when he stabs me. On Wednesday the 12th of October, at 5.31, Alice is dropped off at home by her supervisor, Paul Lynch. At 5.45pm, Dylan will enter Alice's home via an open window round the back. He will chase Alice into the bathroom, grab her from behind and slit her throat approximately six times from ear to ear, severing her voice box. He leaves the scene at 6.25. Ten minutes later, Maxine McGill, Alice's friend, flatmate and work colleague, will find her covered in blood. Please, Please, I've just just come back to my flat and the door was locked. I crossed through the window and my flatmate's covered in blood in the bathroom. You should breathe in. I don't know. I'm trying to look. I'm sorry. Okay, try try to stay calm. What's your cause? She called Alice. 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 Oh my God, she's so She's good. Don't even. She's actually blue. Please. She's blue. 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 Dylan will be arrested at his barracks in Edinburgh on suspicion of murder and driven back to Newcastle for questioning. Do you just want to take off your Help for Heroes bracelet you've got on, please? Um, you won't be allowed to wash your hands and I'm going to need to ask you to put your hands in this bag yeah. all right, and then this bag will get sealed around your hand. Okay, put your hands in here. All all I can tell you is that you've been arrested on suspicion of the murder of Alice Ruggles. Police can't find Alice's phone, but find it has pinged off masks along the route Dylan says he took home. Forensics will find Alice's DNA on Harry Dillon's Help for Heroes wristband and in his car. Hello. So your surname is spelt. Delta Hotel, India, Lima Lima, Oscar, November. I'm going to ask you to consent to us obtaining what we call a non-intimate sample, okay? That is nail scrapings and clippings. Drove down towards Newcastle and because I was, I I just I just wanted an answer. How do you end up in the house? No, I wasn't in the house, I was outside. She came out. Have you ever been outside? Yeah, I've I've been on the road a bit. I never stepped inside the house. So you've knocked on 
the door and there's been no reply. No did reply. you go back to the car? No. Or did you go straight around the back? Straight around the back. I jumped over the, the wall. So you've jumped over? Yeah. Okay. So I've jumped over and she then started saying, um, well, what are you doing here? I'm going to call the police, leave now. And I'm like, Alice, please calm down. Stop panicking. I'm just here to speak to you. You've not given me my answers. I just want my answers. She said, um, I don't want to speak to you or see you because um, I've heard stories about how guys like you end up killing their girlfriends. And I have, I've got a feeling you'd probably do the same. And I don't want to die. I want to live. We're looking for fingerprints. We're looking for blood transfer from the scene to the car. See, the thing is, sorry, I'm in trouble. Go there on. won't be any blood transfer because there was no blood on me when I left that place. So are you saying when you left her, she had no injuries or anything? No, 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 absolutely nothing. No injuries, nothing. She was perfectly fine, fit, healthy. She had a phone on, I think it was, no, her phone was on the left hand. But if thumb on the call button, yeah. like, I'm going to call 999. I'm like, okay, I'm leaving. I don't want it. I don't want any trouble with the police again. I'm leaving. The last time, other than this incident for which you were under arrest for, and so that was the last time you were at her. No, right? there was one in the middle as well. well. I've just asked you that question. When was the last time? Sorry, I, I didn't catch that, but I'm sure. You know I'm saying? And you said it was the chocolate incident. No, I, yeah, well, I, I, I never. I'm sorry, I just didn't think well, that you were. I'll tell you now. So when was it? So it was. I think it was um, it's something Monday. that I did. I shouldn't have done, but because um, I had her Facebook password. So um, I went on her Facebook and changed her password because I, I just didn't want her to go back on Tinder and I was just desperate to not let her go back on Tinder. How do you know she was on Tinder? So um, one of the guys in my flat um, in the army barracks, he was on Tinder and I found out that she was on Tinder because she showed me. Right. So you've logged on as her and changed her password? Yeah. yeah. Obviously I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say I don't stop her and all that. But obviously I did look at her Facebook to see what's going on because I've been with her for so long through all these things so I can't just turn her off my head on her um, WhatsApp, I couldn't hack her phone. I just played that card out like, well, I've got on your phone and I can see there's a guy you're speaking to. Tell me what his name is, tell me what's going on. She fell for it and she was like, oh, I met this guy. Who's this guy? Mike. And I was like, uh, please don't do this to me. How can you move on so fast? I'm still in love with you and you're like, you've moved on. Yeah, everything's restored. Okay, this is a continuation of an interview uh, with Truman Dillon, uh, also known as Harry. We have Alice's phone pinging on a mast near to the airport. All right, the route you've told us that you have driven after you've left the house. Yeah, what I'm saying to you is you have taken Alice's phone. What have you got to say about that? No comment. So what have you done with it? The minute the questions get hard and we can prove you've been lying, you start saying no comment. Why? No comment. Unfortunately, we've seen photographs of Alice. We know exactly what you did. We've been told exactly what happened to her. And how you, you, cut her throat. No comment. You told me you loved her. You said you loved her. Yeah. You didn't love her. You didn't love her. You thought if you can't have her, no one else can have her. That's exactly what you thought. No comment. Why are you no commenting now? Because you're guilty. Right, we'll wind it up now. One minute past two. I'm going to lock on the back door. It is, isn't it? So, lock on the front door. Yeah. That locked. Yeah. She's lying on her back in the bathroom uh, with a very large hole in her neck. Uh, the bathroom's completely awash with blood. In court, he will argue that Alice attacked him and that she fell onto the knife. He shows no remorse in court, full of his own self-importance and narcissistic arrogance. It will later transpire that unbeknown to police or Alice, Three years earlier, Dylan had tracked down and harassed a previous ex-girlfriend, resulting in a restraining order in 2013. In April of 2017, Harry Dylan is convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison with a minimum tariff of 22 years.
Sin esas señales, lying there, I was frozen in fear. A fear that I've never felt in my life before. Alice! Oh my God, she's dead! She's dead! Oh. I didn't want to believe it, so I kept like, moving down very close to her to see if I could hear her breathing. Just wanted somebody there to try and help her to bring her back. But I knew deep down that nothing was going to bring her back. It's something that I don't ever think I'll be able to erase from my memory. What saddens me the most about it is it shadows my memory of Alice when she was alive and when she was happy. And that beautiful smile of hers, I find it really hard to imagine in my own mind because of what I've seen that night. The only thing that's keeping me going sociably now is, is the fundraising aspect. I want to make a difference from the tragedy that, that we've all suffered.